So here's the legs, um, just so you can see how they get put on and stuff. They've got a little press latch on the side, so you just press it in and it comes undone. And then to get them off, um, you just slide them down, rotate them around and the foot just comes out like that. So they've, they've worked out really good. This is a really awesome little latch that I found at my hardware. Um, which was only like $3.50 because I was originally going to make them with magnets so this calf piece was attached with magnets but I really thought that that um, would have too much risk of just popping off so having it latch and lock like that means that it's solid as a rock um, it's got a fairly heavy duty hinge there um, I had to just bend one side of the hinge vertical so that it would be able to glue onto this section um, which you can see on the inside there. It's just got a, like a bit of an angle bent into it and I had to trim down that edge and it's all just you know glued into place with super glue. It's very very strong. Um, PVC and super glue are best friends and it's my favorite method of construction because it's really simple really quick you know I can just heat parts form them and then just glue them together and set them with some setting spray but these um, let's say half legs have worked out really well one of the issues I have is the calf piece originally you can see it dips down slightly on this side because this was originally meant to be this leg um, but when I actually put them together I couldn't they didn't really fit the geometry of my leg properly because you know like your legs are kind of wider here and then they dip in and then they sort of go out on an angle that way so I ended up swapping the calf pieces left and right um, and it just made them fit a lot better um, this section here or this little detail that's just like a basically I've used like a t-nut through the inside so they bolt up tight but they don't put pressure on the actual plastic so that the hinges or well, sorry the um, friction in the joint is not too tight but those are all tightened up perfectly um, this t-nut that holds this in place is actually glued permanently on the inside so that when you tighten this up it's in the correct position um, but yeah like that's all really really good you've got two sections the lower section and the outer disc and then the upper section and the inner disc um, and then the bolts go through between them um, one of the details that is slightly different with my legs compared to possibly legs that um, are printed or the original three pair legs is I don't have um, a wide flange on this inside so it's a little bit more open than normal I did attempt to put a, a piece of plastic in there just to kind of make it look a bit thicker but it didn't quite work um, with my leg being inside so I ended up just removing it and just left it open um, but it, it works just fine it looks it doesn't really look that bad and when you've got your tights with the wires painted on no one's really gonna notice that minor sort of um, design change but other than that, the um, leg bending is very, very good. You know, I can walk upstairs. Um, there's not, not too much pressure on the joints or anything like that. So there's probably not really a risk of this breaking unless you really, you know, bend your knees a lot. And Like if you tried to kneel down on the floor, you'd probably break this. But um, to be honest, they work quite well and the, the freedom of movement is, is really, really good. It's better than I sort of expected it to be. Um, but that comes from several generations of legs that I've built. These ones are foam. Um, so this is the first time I've actually made them out of PVC and they've worked out really good. So I couldn't be happier to be honest. They're almost identical. Um, mo most of the design was taken from this. I did do some modification to this style um, to match a little bit more closely to an original, um, possibly 3, 3D printed leg. Um, some details had to be changed for the way I've designed my knees, um, but I've managed to incorporate this piece here, which gives like the internal hinge detail. So there's actually enough room. You can just see it clearing and it just coming out that little piece just there. 
So there's enough room when your leg is inside so that it doesn't, you know, hit the top of your leg or anything. So that's worked out really well. Um, yeah, so basically all I have to do now is just sort of um, grind out some edges on the inside of this surface here, just because there's a few little sharp bits, but overall it's basically um, fitting really nicely and this it's not uncomfortable to wear. Um, my client actually wants these um, to be worn under a kilt. So I have some minor concerns that when, when you're walking, this edge may be visible. And I was considering actually lifting this edge up a couple of inches just to sort of hide the person's leg underneath. Um, so I may actually do that before I paint these, uh, but the person who's commissioned these will be wearing boots that will cover the lower edge. So that's why these legs only go down halfway and only come up about halfway. So these were the measurements that he asked me to um, work with, but just, you know, like with my experience of costuming and things like that, I'm, I'm worried that, you know, when, when the, when he's walking his kilt may expose like the top edge so it might be beneficial for these to just be raised up slightly because as, as i mentioned before this actually was meant to be the inside edge and this edge is higher on the inside now because i switched i switched the thighs just for um the geometry of the leg to fit better but you know that's not a huge thing to fix and um i think it it will be you know, really quick and easy to kind of rectify that but overall they're basically done um, I've got to paint them silver I've got to just do some sanding and just finishing get some of these um, little gaps and stuff filled in which I'm just going to use uh, my um, 3d printer resin and some talcum powder as a filler um, but yeah like that's basically the pro project is basically almost completed now. Um, I think within a day or two, I can have these basically painted and finished off. So anyway, um, I hope you like what you see here. I don't have plans. A lot of people ask me for plans um, for things like this. Unfortunately, I don't have plans because I fabricate everything from scratch and um, that's basically what you see is what you get. So if you ever want to sort of embark on something like this, I'm unfortunately don't have plans to give you these these are all just basically made with patterns the same way you would make um, a pair of pants or the same way you'd make something out of foam they're just patterned as you go um, all of these circles are just you know kind of cut to basically an eyeball um, size like you know just if someone's leg was thinner you'd probably make these a little bit smaller but I've based a lot of this design off my previous foam legs to get the, you know, basically the proportions of this. So yeah, like this is mostly eyeballed. None of this is, hardly any of this is like measured except for when I make um, a second piece, I just cut like the shapes and then just transfer them left and right and just continue on building. But um yeah so if, if you want plans for these unfortunately i can't give them to you because i don't have them so um you know a lot of people are into 3d printing and that's great if you've got the skills to modify legs um to fit you uh, make them custom to fit different size and shape legs like that's great but i don't use 3d printers i think they're a bit of a hack to be honest they're great for fabricating and mass producing things but you know it takes away the artistry of actually constructing something from scratch and I honestly feel such a sense of achievement when I can put together something like this and show people what is possible without having to use 3d printers and I basically taught myself everything to do this and it's taken me many years probably about five years to be able to get to the point where I can just knock something out like this but there is a lot of time involved. Um, there's a lot of engineering issues to overcome. There's all sorts of things that are required to construct something like this, but it's all stuff that I've taught myself. So, you know, asking for plans is 
cheating and I don't have plans to give you anyway so you know if that's what you want um, I suggest you either spend the time and learn how to do this from scratch or go and get a 3d printer and learn how to you know modify 3d designs and do it that way but um, you know like I just like to be able to show people what is possible and um, yeah this is what's possible you know this is all handmade hand cut it's hand formed, um, you know, I, I just use simple tools, blades, pens, heat guns, super glue, um, and just a lot of time and elbow grease. So that's what's achievable, that's what you get. Um, invest the time in, in your craft and the results will come. So yeah, um, I hope you enjoy my videos, but um, yeah, I, I can't really, give you much more information other than being here to support you if you want help with making stuff like this um, I can't give you plans unfortunately so keep building and may the force be with you